Hello, I will explain what we can supply together with the Aquam 300 uh, geophone and tracer gas combination uh, device. We can supply the hydrogen hand probe, which gets used for example in-house tracer gas leak detection, not so much outside because it's not wind protected. Then we have the hydrogen bell probe, which uses this suction cup, which is kind of wind protecting uh, the suction of the gas from the ground. Then we have acoustic sensors. This one is the test rod, which has extensions and you can use it, for example, in deep chambers to listen uh, on valves or spindles uh, for the acoustic signals of leaks and for example also with the extensions on soft soil uh, push it inside the ground and listen to the sound of the ground as well then we have the universal accelerometer in this case without handle and a magnet which is attached to the sensor so you can use it as a contact microphone just connect it with the magnet to um, iron uh, materials of which is existing of the pipeline and listen to the sound of this and you can also use the universal accelerometer together with a small tripod uh, directly as a ground microphone kind of it's not wind protected but still has a good uh, acoustics and together with the small thread adapter which is adapting a m6 uh, female thread from the universal accelerometer to a m10 female thread of for example the extensions so you can use the extensions also of the with the accelerometer or with the big tripod um, so you can also use it here as a ground microphone then we have the universal accelerometer with handle so it's just easier to operate directly the universal accelerometer as a crown microphone and the most common used sensor is the wind protected crown microphone with a spike which pushes firmly onto the uh, flat ground and senses the signal from the surface then we have the headphones with a 6.3 millimeter mail block standard we have standard batteries we use c cells uh, to operate the aquam 300 central unit we have the usb um, cable which can be used to download data stored on the M300 central unit to a PC or laptop. And we have here the um, big transport case, which can contain all this you see on the table, um, which fits inside. We have also smaller cases where you can just have partially uh, some accessories, which are shown here. Now I will show you how to connect the different kind of sensors to the central unit. Um, here on the left side of the Aquam 300, we have the USB um, connector for the USB con uh, cable and the plug for the uh, headphones jack. This one is very simple, just push it inside and it's properly connected and the usb just is a thread uh, plug so just push it inside and uh, thread it so it's firmly connected and then on the right side of the central unit we have the um, plug for the acoustic sensors i will show you how to connect that all of them have bayonet connectors uh, so you 
turn it until it fits inside. Once it's fitting, you push it a little bit further and then uh, the bayonet just turn it the half way and it's properly connected and cannot slip out anymore. And for releasing it, open the bayonet and pull it and then it's disconnected and you can connect other sensors. The same applies for the hydrogen sensor. In this case, it's a five pin uh, mail plug. Um, also with bayonet, you have to see where it fits inside and push it. Also make sure here when the bayonet is turned, it won't fit inside. So you need to turn back the bayonet so it's straight. Be able to um, to be able to push it inside. Once it's done, you can lock it also with a small turn, and then it's properly connected for releasing it. Same way, and then it's done. Here we have the battery compartment, which contains the four times C cell standard batteries, which can be opened with a small coin. Just turn it. Once it's open, you can also use your fingers, turn it a bit further. The spring is here on this side. The batteries face always with the nipple inside and the flat side towards the spring. And then you just connect the spring here, turn it, make sure it's properly connected. And then use a small coin again or tighten it. So the AquaM 300 central unit has in total four buttons. Two of them are designed as a dial, but you can also for example, with this dial, turn the volume if you are in a measurement. Uh, this uh, button here is for um, starting the unit. Um, this button here is to delete measurements uh, saved on the device or go back in a menu. And this dial is to navigate inside the menu on the different icons and confirm by pushing on it. The same here, if you push on it, um, you also have some additional functions. So to start the machine, you simply press once here on this uh, OK button, then you will see the start screen. And now we are directly in a measurement mode for the acoustic sensors. To go back, you can press here on this button or with the touch screen display, you also can navigate by um, pressing on the different icons in the uh, screen. This is the main menu of the Aquam 300. You can either select the different icons by pressing onto the screen, onto the touch screen, or by turning the dial and selecting uh, the different icons when they are highlighted by pressing onto the dial. I will explain shortly what the different icons mean. In this case here, the first one, we are in the standard acoustic uh, menu. If we confirm it, this one is long time measurement to record a sound for a period of time, let's say 30 minutes or even just a few minutes for continuous operation. And then here we are in the gas measurement by connecting the tracer gas sensors to the device. You can operate in here. This icon here means saving and restoring data, which is saved onto the memories in the machine. Then the next one is for the settings. I will explain this in detail. And then 
other one here in the computer is for retrieving data from the machine to a laptop or computer to, for example, print reports. Okay, I will enter the setting menu because here we have a lot of different settings available. The first icon in the setting menu is the time and date and uh, you can select and change the time according to your time zone where you are in, also the date. Then the language settings where we have different languages available. If you don't find your language in this menu, uh, just contact us and uh, we have more languages available which are actually stored on the flash on the device here. Then the third icon for uh, automatic switch off of the device. You can select the time when the unit will automatically switch off for battery saving purposes. Standard here is 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, no touch or no uh, use of the device, it will switch off automatically. Then illumination of the display. Uh, Leave it in this menu or in these settings is the most economic, uh, enough brightness to operate and still a good power consumption of the battery. If you turn the brightness uh, higher, of course, the batteries will be consumed much quicker. Then the fifth icon here is the frequency settings in the manual filter mode, manual filter mode you can select uh, up to 4000 Hertz maximum frequencies, so very broad uh, bandwidth. And you can also select uh, preset filters. Here are the low pass filters. I always like to hear all the frequencies on the measurement position. So for me, I always say between zero and 4000 Hertz completely open filters, completely open frequency maximum, uh, which in my case uh, is a, a good choice, but you can customize that according to your needs. So anything you change here will then appear in the manual filter settings in the corresponding acoustic modes. Then ear protection, this is automatic shut off of the headphones in order to protect your hearing. And uh, three means very sensitive. That means small noise or like extraordinary small noises will be shut off. If you turn it to zero, that means uh, no ear protection. All noises will be directly transmitted to the headphones without the hearing protection. Standard is three, so quite sensitive uh, to shut off the headphones. Touchscreen is if you have uh, found out that you press onto the touchscreen on, on, a, on a field and it selects into a different menu, then you have to calibrate the touchscreen. You do that by entering in here or you do a test and then you see some uh, icon see here the, the red cross which is moving you can follow it and yeah you can also switch off the touch screen if you don't want to use it so in this case no response anymore from the touch screen i can only operate the device with the dial now i need to go inside and open the touch screen now it's responding again Last icon in the row is the clear memory. So if I have taken some measurement and stored it, I can clear the measurement data by pressing on it. It's done. Clear parameters. It's also setting back to factory setting. For example, the settings I have just done uh, for the manual filter mode is now set back to the factory settings. I would need to change this again to 
uh, the settings I would like to have. And in this case, I prefer to use it in this mode so that I have completely open filters and that's it. Going, pressing onto the door goes back to the main screen. I will now go into the measurement mode for the acoustics by selecting this icon. Now the main screen for the acoustic uh, sensors will start. I will explain all the functions and all the windows, all the icons in this window. So here in the top left you see the battery uh, which is remaining, then the date and the time which is stored when you take a measurement and save it. Then on the top right you have uh, the mode where you are operating in at the moment. This geo means uh, geophone mode. I will explain in a second how to change this. Then here in this screen you have the history of measurement data. Every time you take a recording, the previous recording will be stored in the history. I've just done that, so you see now the last uh, measurement is saved and that will continue as I take continuous readings on one uh, position or one measurement side. Then the 99 is the value of the noise level, which is recorded on the particularly uh, position where you place the sensor. And uh, the blue graph here is just a level indicator and reflects the number again. Below you have written the frequencies, uh, the filter uh, you have set. In this case, it's preset filters for the geophone mode between 50 and 400 Hertz. Then here you would switch back to the main menu to select a different uh, uh, operation. Then here you have the fil preset filter settings. I will show you what happens if I change this. Now I'm in the test rod preset filters and you see here the filter range changes. Now I'm between 200 and 800 Hertz and I also have maximum 2000 Hertz available and uh, this is the manual uh, filter settings I have selected before in the setting menu and here I have completely opened the filter between 0 and 4000 Hertz and full 4000 Hertz in the small frequency picture here below. So that are the three filters operations you can do. You can always change the filters if you are in one of the menu by clicking into this frequency picture and then uh, this icon will open where you can change uh, here in this case the high pass filter and the low pass filter according to a picture which you have recorded. Then this icon here below is for the operation mode. In this case we are now in the geophone. Geophone means I'm comparing the minimum noise levels uh, with different positions on one measurement side. And of course, where you have the maximum noise intensity beneath there exactly should be the leak. And the next one I can select here is the PWG. PWG is a different operation mode where you um, use a pulse wave generator as an acoustic pipe tracing tool and in this case you go for the maximum noise intensities and not for the minimum anymore so it's a reverse um, operation in this case and the third one is the smart mode and in the smart mode it's an additional information you get uh, by taking a measurement, acoustic measurement, 
So here you see the big screen is still the 99, it's the noise level. And then the small number here, the 29, is the smart indicator or smart number. And the smart number is a equation um, which is reflecting also the frequencies um, on the different measurement positions. That means the basic background of it is if you approach a leak, uh, the higher the frequencies will get. And if you get away from a leak, uh, the frequencies will decrease. So you have lower frequencies within. And therefore the equation reflects higher frequencies in a higher portion. And that means the smart indication indicator will expand exponentially increase if you approach a leak it's just additional information for you um, you can use it or just use it as a simple geophone uh, so you don't need to worry about this smart indicator then here this icon is for the sensitivity of the sensor so all sensors which are connected should be let's say calibrated on the different measurement positions how to do that if you are in this icon uh, you can press on it you see now here the green graphs every time i'm talking the sensor hears my voice and now it's going up if i keep silence this will be very uh, low and i can increase the sensitivity so that I can have an indication of noise levels which are higher if I place the sensor on a different position or lower to be able to compare them. You can also do that automatically by pressing here on the OK button for a longer time. Then you will hear a multiple beep and now you see it's leveling uh, in according to algorithm which is programmed into the device and now 45 percent in this case is a good value so if i press a recording you see now a noise level of eight um, and if i scratch here on the table maybe a bit more silent um, you then get higher values and you can compare them in the filter menu you can uh, very nicely select the filters according to the sound which you are recording at that moment um, if you press uh, on the ok button you activate the headphones and now you can really nicely switch off the low frequencies you can hear it and now only the high frequencies are passing now almost no sound is audible anymore. I open the high pass filter again. Do the same with the low pass filter. So now I'm narrowing down the high frequencies. Now it starts to get deeper, deeper. So now only very low frequencies are audible and you can see the effectiveness of the filters. Also a trick in this case is if you are already uh, operating on a measurement side where you have to decrease the sensitivity to zero but still have 99 as a noise level, you can use a very narrow bandwidth of filters to still decrease the measurement values so in this case it will would be very hard to make a noise which is uh, having a high impact you see zero one even i'm scratching on the sensor very hard okay last icon here is for the volume of the headphones you can do that by selecting the menu or if you take a measurement and you press the key here or the handle switch, 
and uh, in the same time operate the dial for the volume it will also adjust the volume according to your preferred settings. For the long time measurement recording menu, you can enter by pressing on this icon. And now you have the different preset filters you can uh, operate with geophone, test rod, or manual. And uh, this is for the uh, logging period, uh, so up to 16 minutes, from five minutes to 60 minutes, you can record one noise. By pressing onto the OK button, you start the recording. You see now uh, the graph, which is writing the uh, history. And if I keep a bit silent for a minute, you see that now the frequency or the intensity increases again. So this was the period where I've been silent. So that's really the perfect mode if you're operating on your own and uh, you are not sure if this sound you are sensing at a particular measurement spot is from a connection, a house connection, for example, and you leave the sensor on this position, let it record the sound and uh, you go and turn a valve, in example, and see if the um, sound disappears or stays there in order to check if this sound is created by this particular connection or not. For the gas measurement, you press on this icon and if you have attached the sensor already to the device, which I have done, you will see now here the red bar graph will turn green with the time. Uh, that means the sensor heats up for one minute until it has the uh, good temperature for sensing the hydrogen on the sensor cell itself. So that takes, as I said, one minute. I can explain uh, in the meantime the different icons here. So this first icon is for alarm value. You can set a threshold, for example, 500. And if it's over that uh, value, it will start alarming with beeping. Then uh, calibration, the zero means if you have uh, continuous uh, gas concentrations, for example, of a value of 100, um, you can zero that. And then only values above 100 will be indicated here in this um, big number screen. The headphones clear gives out the audio signals through the headphones. That is the speaker built in the to the device. Uh, if you activate that, it will um, make a beep when you start the measurement. Important is for the, all the sensors when you have uh, attached them to the machine that um, you don't activate the tracer gas measurement by pressing onto the button here. This is only circulating the air on the sensor and has a quicker reaction time you know that doesn't start it so you always have to press here the OK button to take a reading now you hear every few seconds a small beep and it is uh, indicating that it's measuring and sensing now gas concentration a good um, test for the sensor is always to breathe into the sensor self itself to see if you have a gas concentration of or not. Normally, all human uh, digestions have uh, some hydrogen containing into the into the exhaust in the breath. So I just do the example here. See the values rise a bit. It's now 
quite slow reaction time. I haven't pressed the um, button and my breath contains not that much hydrogen today, which is fine. If you want to uh, store this value and compare, you just stop the measurement and then on the next position you place the sensor, you press again onto the OK button and then you see here again the history, uh, the same principle as in the acoustic mode. To save measurement data onto the memory of the AquaM300, you have to go here on this icon on the folder. And now you can select the uh, measurement uh, menu. You have recorded the data, in this case, the uh, standard acoustic mode. You could also select the hydrogen uh, tracer gas mode or the uh, permanent continuous uh, acoustic um, measurement mode. In this case, I have done some recording in the acoustic mode standard acoustic mode. If you want to save this data, you press here on the folder in icon with the arrow pointing into the folder. Then you can select here a position. So we have 20 memories possible. And when you have selected, you press again on the folder. It will go back. You can see now here uh, the position one has the time and the date of just now. I saved the, uh, the measurement data in it. And to retrieve this data, you click here on the arrow pointing out folder and press on the position you want to uh, restore. Click again on the folder and if you go back into the menu, you then have all the history of uh, the measurements you have taken on this particularly uh, measurement uh, point. To download data from the AquaM300 to your laptop or computer, uh, when you have connected the USB cable to the machine and your laptop, you have to go then in the machine on this icon. And uh, once the connection is established with the corresponding program on your laptop or computer. You then can select the different measurement uh, storages on the memory and then, for example, print reports.